What's up, family? It is your man, CRB Jr. in the house. We are, yes, indeed, we are here at Motown Mafia Podcast, which, of course, is a Big Boss Filmworks production. To my far left is my man, my partner, my brother, Lou. How you feeling, Lou? Man, life is good, brother. That is a good thing. That is a good thing. Everything good in your world? Everything's good. Things are looking up. We got old friends, we got new friends, and uh, Big Boss Filmworks is growing. That's what we do. That is what we do. We told you we can't stop, won't stop. Um, But in the middle of us, we have, yes, an old friend and a special guest all at the same time. Um, We're going to unpack his story. Um, It has been our pleasure been working on getting this gentleman here on the pod for a moment. he is one of the fastest growing, hottest artists in, I'm going to say, in the country, in the African American community. That's right. And he'll tell you um, about it. It has been a joy to watch his growth. And we have, with no further ado, Dawu Shabazz. How you doing, Brother Shabazz? Well, I'm doing great. I'm blessed. Thank you for having me today. Oh, man. No, great that, time. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. What's happening, fam? So we back. Um, we had forgot Brother Shawu again in the middle here. We got Brother Dawu Shabazz, one of the fastest up and coming African American artists in this here U.S. of A. Uh, we did not give out give out your social media handles again, where people can find you. So it's, um, you can always go to Dawu Shabazz Art. As far as you pressing up Dawu Shabazz Art, everything will come up on social media. Um, it's my Instagram, um, Dawu Shabazz Art dot com is my website. And Dawu Shabazz art on on Facebook. Branding, baby. Yeah. Branding. So, um, you know, we started this journey, and you know, you got in, and we would just we won't. You got to guys to see the earlier content. Um, you and my dad ended up spending a lot of time together oh, for a few yeah, years. Yes, man. I love to rise with him every day. Yes, <laughs> he was always <laughs> there for me. Oh uh, man, even even if I had a, a, a move to try to make something. A little more for myself. I could call on him. He, I got you, Dawu. I got you. So, how long did it take, or didn't take long at all? He forgot. This guy here has seen a lot and done a lot. Oh, it didn't take long. No, <laughs> you, you can see the publicity that he that he received when he walked in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and his posture and everything. You can see you, he has the he has that energy of um, he about his business. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and speaking about it, this one of the numerous guys. Uh, this was covered in Feds Magazine. Mm-hmm. You guys have all heard of him and follow this stuff. And this was, uh, as we were revisiting some of the old stories and old coverage that a lot of these street legends have gotten. Um, but what people don't know is Mr. Untouchable, a.k.a. Leroy Nicky Barnes, had a lot of Detroit overlap of Detroit connections, connections and, mm-hmm. and, and things. Yeah, yeah. So this guy, again, um, we'll put up some of the photos. Leroy Nicky Barnes, you know, um, part of the famed council out there in Harlem. But Dad met Leroy at the old 20 grand. You heard the old players talk about the 20 grand. Mm-hmm. Um, he was introduced to Leroy Nicky Barnes from a guy by the name of Clarence Gale. Clarence Gale was a big, big guy back in the day out of Chicago. Um, and he was partners with Nicky. For people don't know, Nicky Barnes owned real estate here in Pontiac. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Him and Clarence owned a um, a big apartment complex back out there, and um, Eddie had got to know Nikki from running around in the streets because they were dealing with uh, some of the same Italians mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. way way back in the day. So, you know, now you you've been around I ain't gonna, before you was an artist, or you were still an artist, but you <laughs> used to. What would you say are some of the things? Different between the old guys, say, from the 70s, 80s, to kind of what you see going on outside now. And I know you'd be f- moving in these fancy circles now with people buying art and selling pictures to Puffy. So, But do you still remember back in the day? Yeah, back in- <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, as far as um, how, it, how it went, as far as the old school? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the way he carry yourself, um, the way they carry yourself and in, in being a... Um, and sharing with the knowledge of what they've been through, but um, a lot of these uh, older cats now, 
they some still get caught up in the in the drugs. Yeah. In the drugs, and then he was I could see he was a smart man that even um, with the business that he was with, he was smart not to mess with. Drugs. Yeah, you, Pops never smoked a cigarette. Yeah, yeah. His favorite drink was right. Diet Pepsi. Diet you, can, Pepsi. you can see that healthiness no, but, in him now. Yeah, but no, he was he was hardcore when he was younger. Man, he used to drink Coca Cola straight. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, back then, out of the right? glass <laughs> bottle. Out of the glass bottle. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, yeah, he was, he a, was rebel. a rebel. A <laughs> rebel. <laughs> but no, nah, never smoked, never drank, never smoked a joint in his life. Yeah, because I mean, it, it's, it's sad that. Um, some of the old schools now, um, what even I have um, been part of before, after I um, was incarcerated, they still had the mentality to just stay in that same state of mind, and a lot of them have died off now. A lot of them have died off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, again, I believe, I have to do some homework and find out. Will Smith, I think, is supposed to be playing. Yeah, this is this was uh, um, Nikki Barnes to be Netflix, a is, Netflix uh, series, a web series about uh, about Nikki Barnes' it, life. Right now, I did. Do you know what the status of that project is? After the slap, it's hard to say. What so that's project. what I figured. I figured, <laughs> I figured that the, oh, yeah, that the slap, yeah, the slap yeah. may have stopped, but I think it's already in the can. So eventually, it'll come out because people will forget about yeah. the slap. But he has a movie coming out called Emancipation coming out on Apple Plus. Uh, Will Smith. So I'm, I, my assumption is they're waiting for it to blow over a bit before they go ahead and put it out. I, for one, would love to see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Nikki's story needs to be told. Uh, those who are familiar with the story, of course, Nikki would end up, and again, him and Eddie, I mean, him and Eddie had grew such a relationship. You know, the streets knew him as Nikki, but people who were close to him referred to him as Leroy. Mm -hmm. um, Eddie Jackson, when you would hear him talking about Nikki Barnes, he never referred to him as Nikki Barnes. He'd be like, I'm going to catch up with Leroy. We'll Leroy. Be in town. But you get yeah. a message, Leroy, from New York. Call he had him. a lot of history with uh, Marzette as well. Am I correct? <clears throat> Man, that whole crew, Nikki, um, and that guy Goldfinger, I'm gonna I wanna really get some mm -hmm. more information on Goldfinger. Might have to reach out to uh the homie Cavario. Yeah. Senator Cavario was yeah. real, real close to that situation. Yeah. Um that, that whole New York thing. That whole New York thing. But again, um I never forget we was over on the block on French Road and uh this girl, working girl, Angie. She was talking about how when she was living in New York, how this guy from Detroit named Texas Slim yeah. would come and be getting bricks, right? Yeah. Um, those that know the story, when Eddie and them were at the fight, mm -hmm. their their thought was through Devil. Devil knew Nikki, and Devil knew this guy Goldfinger. Mm -hmm. And um, they had hoped that, that they was going to do an introduction. Then, of course, as those that know the story, as fate would have it, Eddie would end up meeting um, Carmine Lombardozzi, who was chief lieutenant of Carlos Gambino and the Gambino crime family. So Eddie gets plugged in directly with the mob. So he doesn't need to deal with Goldfinger or Nicky Barnes, but as fate would have it. And the crazy part about it, the feds always believed until years later when it came out that Eddie was basically a, por a part of the... Nikki Barnes, New York. Right. The, um, yeah. What's the FBI agent that those guys drew in them? Um, interviewed on um, on that crime town. Uh, yeah, I know um, exactly who you're talking about. Um, if you go on Spotify and you go to Kingpin's Kid Radio, the actual uh, lead. Ron Giobardo. Ron Giovanni. Right, yeah. just, I'm, I'm probably saying his name wrong, but Ron Valley, who was the chief investigative officer for Special Agent Valley, whose first case, and it's Eddie Jr. often in mind, shout out to Eddie Baby down there. And, Pick um, up Eddie Baby. Check out Eddie Baby at Real True Street Crimes. Check out Eddie Baby on Instagram. He is Eddie Baby. Um, Ron Valley, the, the Fed's working assumption for the Eddie Jackson organization <coughs> was that they were an off branch of Nikki Barnes. Mm, yeah. And because the feds, only black guys they knew who was getting jive 90% pure mm. was Nikki and his crew. Yeah. 
So their assumption and Farrah Lee, Eddie's first carrier to get popped, was coming from where? New York. New York. New York. Mm -hmm. When Eddie and 5 0 get pulled over a couple years later, and they get, so Farrah Lee gets popped with two kilos of H coming back from New York. Mm -hmm. Eddie and 5 0, two years later, get popped with 11 bricks of H. Two, three bricks of girl coming from New York. Mm -hmm. So the feds, understanding their logic, they're like, obviously, they're plugged into New York. So who in New York, what, who would they be plugged in New York who could have that kind of resources and connection? They got to be working with Nikki. Yeah. And them. They, they didn't even fathom that Eddie was actually dealing directly with the mob. <laughs> to way after the fact. Yeah. Way, way after the fact. Um, and then when Nikki does get in trouble, guess who his bail bondsmen are? Oh, yeah, that would be... Uh, Chucky and Gofar. Oak, Gofar. Yeah. Same guys who wrote millions of dollars worth of bonds for Pops and Eddie were the same people. And, of course, because the Gofars are tied in. Shout out to Chucky. Check out to Irving. Go R.I.P. Irving. Shout out to Chucky. I mean, these guys are biggest, biggest they come. Huge. Biggest they come. Um... Yeah, they had the same belt. Nikki had the same bells. Bondsman was getting bailed out by the same guys who wrote Bonds for Pops and Eddie for um, seven years. Then when Nikki does end up in jail, he ends up at Leavenworth. Mm -hmm. And who guess who's doing time at Leavenworth then? The Fat Man. Mm. Uh, in fact, um, I think we talked about it before. Eddie, oh man, you know, he's he like, oh, boy, don't ever let him get you in that ninja outfit. Because um, when they... You know, and that New York shit when it all went south, and as you know, street legend has it, the, the crew Nick. So this guy goes to jail. Mm -hmm. He's head man. Mm -hmm. While he's locked up, other members of his crew start sleeping with his broads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they start breaking some of the rules. He's getting word in the joint that they 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 they're fucking your woman. They riding your cars. Niggas clowning them in jail. They, according to Nikki, they're not taking care of his legal situation like they're supposed to. Uh, again, I'm, I was a baby when all this was happening. I look at it now from a history point of view. Mm. People got different takes on it. Which which rule is worse? Um, that you don't do that to your man. That's breaking one of the rules of the street. So if, according to Nikki's spin on it, y'all broke the rules. Y'all broke y'all broke the rules of the street by disrespecting me the way y'all did. So I'm gonna break another rule of the street and I'm telling. Mm. And then Nikki tolls tells on his whole crew. Um huge, huge indictment ends up following all the guys involved with his commission. Wow. I mean with his count the council they were called. And unfortunately a real stand up guy named Guy Fisher ends up getting brought down. Yeah, so anyway. Nikki, um, Nikki tells he ends up going to Leavenworth when Eddie's working in the kitchen, as he would tell the story later, when the feds, after Nikki decides he's going to cooperate, and he's like, since y'all going to play me like just locked up, y'all all about to be locked up with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, Eddie was working in the kitchen when the feds came and uh, put him in the ninja, put him in the ninja outfit, oh, wow. walked him out the back of the prison kitchen. And uh, and Nikki was never seen again. Yeah, and and it's it, it has been uh, documented that um, he just died actually not too few years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 R.I.P. Nikki Barnes. Yeah, big time. Nino Brown is uh, is is inspired by uh, by Nikki Barnes. Without doubt. In fact, um, if you watch New Jack City, um, we're gonna do a, we gotta do a review on New Jack City. Yeah, big time. You know, Big time. I be telling Lou what Nino told G Money. You're bigger than that. Bigger than that. You're bigger than that. <laughs> we gotta stop thinking little, baby. You're bigger than that. Look, Nino is. You know, that's another one of that Hollywood shit, man. They make Nino out to be the bad guy. I mean, he did kind of rat out at the end, but that was more of a scene where Mario Van Peoples and them were trying to make a point because what's he say? This thing is bigger than Nino Brown. Yeah. I got a list. I got the Colombians, the Dominicans. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if I go down, everybody's going everybody's down. Going but that was more of a political statement. But um, no, Nino didn't do nothing wrong. 
<laughs> he didn't. He know didn't do nothing wrong. <laughs> he know was playing the game kind of the way the game gets. And he tells you, man, you, you know, we're gonna talk about this DC. It's the guys in DC. You listen to the whole thing, and like this whole thing, they were young, and the whole thing gets brought down because of who's fucking who's who's sleeping with who's woman. And what's yeah. Nino tell G Money? You worried about who I'm laying bike to? What is this? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. it, 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 and, and then it just because it, going back to this Nikki Barnes situation. Yeah. In the end, this whole multi hundred million dollar organization, because you can't, all the women out here, you got to go do this to your man. I, sometimes I just, I never, wow. I never, I just, I don't be getting it. Sometimes I just, I don't, I don't be getting what we black men sometimes I mean, for be, real. be thinking. Wow. <laughs> when it comes to, real. when it comes to them broads, man. Yeah, and they keep, they keep throwing more into the, um, in the social media. Like, oh, uh, man, it's right. Oh, right. Come on, yeah. You know, they, they, they wearing just like panties now. It, <laughs> panties, if you got panties, you lucky. <laughs> well, I mean, how many, how many rap, how many rap songs you know, I heard the guy say, I, I fucked your woman, I did this, I was in, the, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, Culturally, mm. it, it's it, it's etched in our culture. Mm. Again, let me tell you two bands about me. Oh, this is about two years ago. I think I'm special. You know, I don't be on those social media platforms at all, and I'm like a dinosaur when I am. <laughs> so I'm like so gullible, right? So some voluptuous young lady. I'm always hitting the, like, I don't be thinking of this shit. I hit the, like, the button. like button. <laughs> right? <laughs> she inboxes me and was like, yada, 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 I'm an aspiring model, da, 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 da. Oh, can I get a, don't, can I get a $50 donation? I don't even know how to do it. I call Lou. I'm like, Lou, can we send this girl $50? I don't know. <laughs> this is a fucking hustle. Yeah. I'm being hustled. <laughs> Uh, oh, I learned that oh day. My God. The only fans yeah. mafia. <laughs> yeah, I start going through. So after the yeah. after the fifty dollar donation, I start paying a little closer attention, and I start. I was like, oh, I think she asked all the niggas for fifty dollars. Yeah, 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 it's a recording. <laughs> you know, I'm old school. I'm just used to you. Uh, you want to do? You want to do something? It's like, you got to play some change. We do something strange. I, you know, all of this. Technology to get to get to the same point. I'm uh, like, well, you got so many out there. Jack. Why didn't you just say you needed some money, baby? We to <laughs> go through all of this shit. If a nigga be nice to you, might be nice to him. I get that'd, that'd it. That'd be, that, that'd be their way of um, throwing a little um, reel out there and, and, and See finding that? somebody. Like, all right, right. But I'm like. Ain't gonna sometimes you find out it's not who you think you appreciate. Why? Because that well, I was like, well, baby, I'm old. I ain't gonna pay for no pictures. Fuck a picture. <laughs> I, I ain't got no problem paying per se, but we ain't gonna pay for pictures. <laughs> we don't do that. I'm not into I'm not into photography like that, y'all. <laughs> They take it to a whole. Uh, it's yeah. so much shit out here now. Yeah. It's easy. So, it's easy money out there. It's a lot easy money. Yeah. Come to find out, so some of the girls, you know, when I be out doing research for the pot, I be have to go to the strip club mm -hmm. to do research, you know, mm -hmm. for yeah. my job. Yeah, strictly okay. so, your job. For my strictly job, so, research. So I can keep a pulse on the street. I have to go sometime to the you strip keep club. Your heartbeat to the, to right. the street. Right. So I be knowing what's going on, man. And I guess I'm like, uh, they'd be like, Daddy, let me tell you. And I'd be like, okay, tell Daddy what happened. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd be telling me about this money these niggas be giving them on this damn phone. And yeah, um, yeah, they'd be like, yeah. Daddy, you got to tell me what to do with my money. And Daddy, I need to know how to invest it. You smart. You'll be having businesses and stuff. And I'd be like, at first, I was like, oh, baby, you ain't getting enough money, really, for me to help you. <laughs> then they start, oh, mm. she ran her account. I was like, I think we can book all next week for your financial, <laughs> for your financial. Because you're doing better than 90% of my yes. clients. Yes. Yes. Unbelievable, y'all. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. But again, um, yeah, man, we're going we're gonna to do a deep dive. We need to figure out what's going on. Um, when we start doing this stuff again, though, back to it, um, I don't know what Nikki's relatives and them are doing. Um, but as we say, you know, you got BMF. Right now, thank God, Meech and those and the shout out to the BMF family. They're really smart the way they handled that thing. Yeah, 
And, yeah, definitely. And they're getting they're getting their due out of their story that they sacrificed me still doing time. Hopefully he'll be home soon. T is home. Uh, great to see the second generation of the Flannery family now being able to go legit, get into acting, music, all the shit they're doing. You know, salute, salute to them. Um, mm -hmm. But people like the Burns family. Um, I mean, it's cool that Will Smith is going to be playing him, but I'm sure Nikki got grandkids and family that me, you know, and we, yeah, we just, use we, taste. and I know again, yeah, I, I, in there. I deal with it every day. We don't want to talk about it, even though the shit happened 50 years ago. Um, statue limitation is gone, you know. You guys in New York, you guys got to organize. We got to organize here in Detroit. I'm going to keep saying this. Yeah. Ain't none of it a secret. All this shit's public record. Mm -hmm. You know, and if he's talking about some killing somebody, don't talk about that because there ain't no statute of limitation on murder. But the police, white folks, they already know y'all sold all the dope. That's why they put y'all in jail. As my father used to say, I know why I'm in jail. White folks said, y'all niggas went crazy. <laughs> and he said, I know exactly why I'm in jail. Yeah. Um, but he's getting his roses now. Mm-hmm. You know? Um... So again, yeah, I shout out. No, but I'm not. I'm not in condoning how Nikki ended his hustling career, but you you can't be talking about this thing as we talk about the guys from that era who are now yeah. get, getting their media attention. Um, and um, so all I can do is throw it out there. If, if somebody out there, any of them, I know. Dot. Um, again, it's great to see Guy Fisher. He is out. Shout out to yeah. Guy. We did a post on him. You guys can look that up on Guy Fisher. I know he's doing some positive Dr. things. Dr. Guy. I'm sorry, Dr. Guy Fisher oh, again. This yeah. brother, check this out. This brother, Guy Fisher, was a big guy with Nikki. Goes to jail mm -hmm. with no high school diploma. He's the only man in the history of America. He got his, G I, don't, I believe, let me not be clear. I believe he got his GED. He may have had, one second, Ryan, one second, one second. Can you get that? Because he'll keep knocking because they act like, even though he knows we're recording, they just, they just my people amaze me, man. I think that maybe it's not. Maybe I'm yelling at the wrong person. No, that's somebody I ain't never seen before. Tell them we're, we're, we're taping. They got to come back. Hey, we got we doing something up in here, man. We we uh, we come back later. All right. All right. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I just talked to this thing. Why not <laughs> ring it in the doorbell? See, this be live here, family. We don't be playing. We on the block, all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, yeah, everyone's got a book. You got to get you a book. You need to write you a book. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. Inspire some while. people, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'd Go say all it. the way back um, um, as far as what happened after I was incarcerated. But uh, like I said, the, the dream, the dream was even before I got incarcerated, you know, because I, uh, before before I had got my art um, noticed in the Charles H. White Museum. And yeah. I and I think that man, was in the early, no, in the late nineties. You know, speaking of the gold fires and, and you know, one of the best compliments I've ever heard somebody give my dad, uh, and he's a big time members of the Jewish tribe and you know, owned casinos and stuff and uh, they had just got out and mm -hmm. he was introducing me to him and they said you know if your father grew up in your time a guy like him ends up a senator or congressman he said but back in his day you know black guys just didn't have those kind of options right mm -hmm. and I say that to say that you now becoming a critically you are a critically acclaimed artist you're so much more than your that jacket that the state <laughs> um, guys like Nikki, it, how much talent we have in our community that goes untapped right. and unrealized, right? right? Man, right. come on with it. Right. And that's what the generation, or now, the old schools, they're um, sharing that knowledge as far as from the art. Like I say, the art is that way. The art is that way. Yeah. Um, so again, man, thank you, Brother Shabazz. We're about to wrap it up here. Um, we want to give another shout out to uh, Vinyl's, yeah. Vinyl's Apparel. Yeah, I gotta get that, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On Davidson, that's between Linwood and Dexter. Um, 
Uh, and Blazer Hook was right next to it, I believe. What was that address? It was thirty two forty six. Let me make sure. Double sure, double sure, double yeah, sure. Wildermere and uh and, and Davison. Between Wildermere and Davison and just ask for vinyls again, the hottest stuff that's vinyls apparel. Um last time again, what's your where they can reach you at on social media? Dole Shabazz Art. At Dole Shabazz Art. On Instagram and Dole Shabazz Art dot com on my website. Awesome, awesome. So, what else we got popping, Lou? Oh, yeah, we got Making of the Mafia coming out Thanksgiving mm -hmm. along with our Patreon. Yeah, and so we're going to do, I'm just going to be looking at these Fed magazines. We'll profile, I was thinking, like each one, each Sweets magazine and Feds that we ran an ad in, whoever was the cover. Like, uh, can you hand me that? Feds right there. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, this one here? Yeah. Okay. Tricky. Uh oh. Ah, well. Last one. There you go. So, like, I'm thinking this brother here, Kenneth Waller, made his fortune in the small but notorious city of Camden, New Jersey. So, we'll do some info because, in, um, to show you how this thing is gone, right? Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this cover story, which was issue 34. Uh, Feds Magazine. Shout out to Brother Yuna. I mean, Sister Yuna and Brother Black, the male, the whole Feds uh, Magazine family. Yeah, big up. But yeah, we ran this article and back, as you see, when we ran this ad with them, the book's name was The Rise and Fall of Urban Empire. We hadn't right. even changed it to Motown Mafia. Mm -hmm. um, the iconic photo, Rise and Fall of Urban Empire. Um, yeah, so, you know, it'll be all, we'll do this all leading up to the premiere of The Making of the Mafia because the guys at Feds, these advertisements and all, yeah. are, you know, really part of the story there, so. And speaking of Motown, I, I personally wanted to send out uh, uh, Rest in Peace to Ivy Joe Hunter, unsung writer for Motown. He He's written such hits as Dancing in the Streets and, and like numerous others. If, uh, if you follow Motown and you are a fan, and I'm pretty sure a lot of our, you know, uh, you know, viewers and listeners just wanted to send a, a special, special rest in peace. Awesome, awesome. Make sure you do that. Make sure you do that. And if you guys are watching us um, on YouTube, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Yeah, and um, the notification bell. Notification bell. Um, if you guys are writing and you listen to a lot of content, any place where pods are available, we're not yet up on iTunes, but we're definitely up on Spotify and Anchor. Yeah. And do not forget to check in and subscribe to our sister channel, Diaspora Plugs. We're going to start doing the that Money Monday thing that we do, that we used to do on here on, on the Big Boss, on the uh, Motown Mafia podcast always doing some entrepreneurial lessons, stories, and interviews. Those yeah. things will now be available on Mondays on the Diaspora Plug TV. Yes, sir. And you'll be able to see the full interview with uh, Brother Sebas and some posts from it, you know, and this is his first time here on the pod, but it will not be his last. Definitely. Thank you again, brother. It Thank is. You. I am so proud of you, man. Yeah, I am so you. proud of you. Thank you. Yeah. I really am. You does. This has done my heart well, man. <laughs> man, that too. Well, that's yeah. what we do. It's real. We be outside. Yeah. We be everywhere. Yeah. As, as the young rappers just tell me, it is not a game. <laughs> <laughs> now they say in New York, we outside. We yeah. outside all we the outside. time. All the time, for real. <laughs> Easiest people in the world to find. <laughs> <laughs> they you know, owe nobody, and all y'all niggas will owe me if you ain't paid me by now. I rest. Sure that you're probably not, so <laughs> it's, it's all good. Right. Uh, all right, but it's your man, CRB Jr., here with Dawu Shabazz, Brother Lou. Everybody good? Everybody good. Check yes, me out yes. on Flyers Plus Wonderful. Graphics on Instagram. I love you guys. Peace. Holla at your man. Peace.
the and the daughter the daughter might have pearl earrings they be beaming but that's to show how your black skin beams to this to this right nobody you, you know what I mean I'm saying? if you want to show off gold you got to put it on a black on a black right. canvas right yeah. you right. want to show off your diamond nothing nothing is going to complement anything like a black canvas right yeah, there you the go black, yeah 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 and that's, that's what he does and and that is so intriguing so intriguing and engaging yeah. you know when people um, purchase his art and have in a home mm -hmm. you'll be non-stop engaged <laughs> <laughs> all right we're gonna talk about charleston white now all right man i think you can give some insights because some you of the can, stuff i'm gonna talk about yeah you can i, I never stopped the uh it, that that one camera just stopped but the other one didn't so you can just keep on rolling um, so we don't need to do another. No, intro. you don't have to. Just keep on going. There is a brother by the name of Charleston White <laughs> that, you know, it'd be sometimes your bad at my age be catching up to me, man. Because I'd be like the last to know. It's like, uh, shout out to a man I'm about to mention, uh, the young homie, uh, 42 Doug, right? Right. So, you know, we're down, um, downtown in the high rise, right? I'm at my joint. Okay. See this brother coming and going? And I'm a jewelry kind of guy. I used to be, you know, I don't wear it. But he would be blinging like Liberace. Finally, his man, like, cut into me and was like, well, we know who you is and you don't know who he is. Wow. wow. And I was like, damn, nephew, you got me. <laughs> and he like, uh, that's my man. That's 42 Doug. I'm his manager. And I'm still like. I'm still going to be right, right. <laughs> so he told me, though, he said, you know what? Ask some of your nephews, some of your young homies about us. Right. So I did. Well, come to find out that everybody else on the planet, the boy liked the hot one of the hottest things out, and he's really talented. Right. Yeah, so shout out to 42. I think 42 Big might be. 42. Shout out to 42. Uh, but that's just an age thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just, I hadn't, um, I hadn't, I just didn't know. And then I knew, and yeah. And um, we, uh, speaking of which, we're supposed to run into some more Detroit hip hop elite. Oh, in yeah. fact, um, yeah, coming up, let's let's make sure we get the information straight yeah, on that. Time. But I was talking about my age and being late to things, and I'm always online. But this brother Charleston White, mm -hmm. I just really came across him, mm -hmm. and he fascinates me. But back to what uh, brother Lou was talking about on. October the 23rd at 1440 Franklin Street. Big Boss is proud to be participating in a literacy drive. There is uh, two of the hotter rappers, I think I can say fairly in the country, that are both Detroit nah, no Bees. Question. Sada Baby and hmm. Skilla Baby. Uh, We're going to be networking with them guys. We're get, uh, down with um, Hood Books. Shout out to Michelle Moore. Um, you know, she reached out to us, you know. I've always said I'm like Trick Daddy, yeah. you know, I love the kids, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. I, I love the kids, so when she said, um, we're trying to do something for the kids, she said, we got Skilla Baby, they're going to come help out us do something for the kids in the literacy situation, and um, and then the homie Sada Baby is going to come to lend his celebrity and his shine wow. to the event, so again, family, that is at, um, that's October the 23rd, I believe that is a Sunday. It's going to be at 1440 Franklin Street, and uh, we're going to be there for um, a Hustle and Grind um, and Big Squad event uh, for, yeah. for, for literacy. To, um, so you better get some of the books, um, getting so, off zero. Go ahead. So tell me, will they have any vendoring tables? There are going to be some vendoring tables there. Hmm. So oh, we might yeah. need to we need yeah, to yeah, we have to make your entree in. booth. We right, let's okay. put yeah, something together. Hard, yeah, yeah. So I got um, my tables and tents. If it was, it was, yeah, yeah. Fine. So we looking, we really looking forward to that. So again, yeah, we're gonna be with Sada Baby, Skiller Baby, Michelle Moore, Hood Books, Say You Promise Publishing, and Big Boss all collaborating. And yeah, we put something together, Shabazz. Yeah, and um, Let's see if we can't get them on the show sometime before the uh, before the. Uh, the book, you know, the book, the, the uh, literacy thing. Yeah, yeah, let's, or, or, or doing, I mean, yeah, um, we yeah, might even time. be able to, um, we'll have to see what the logistics are on that. It's always challenging shooting or doing the pod live, but um, we can figure out a way maybe even to do it live. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do it live, so that, that's going to be hot, so yeah. So, I didn't know about 42 Doug till he had already went platinum, 
<laughs> and I didn't know, I didn't find out about uh, Charleston White until he already had like four million people following him. Wow. You know, yeah, and, right? and come to find out, he's like the hottest thing, like on. He's off. exploded. Yeah, uh, but you guys gotta know, I'm busy. I'm very, very busy. Very he must busy. be making money. I see this. I see the throne that he has on his on shows. I mean, <laughs> so, so um. Here's, and I'm going to sum up, and I'm, again, um, he's a deep, he's funny as can be, mm -hmm. but the topics he's hitting on is um, some deep shit, right? Mm -hmm. So his main thing is he hates the gangs. The gangs. The okay. gangs, right? Okay. So he started off really roasting uh, the Bloods and Crip thing out of um, California, mm -hmm. and he kind of was giving the crews out of... Um, Chicago a pass because of their history and their respect for the old man. And when I said old man, I'm talking about yeah. Larry Hoover. Larry Hoover. The yeah. real old man. Yeah. Uh, shout out to, to that whole thing. Um, you know, some of my security in Atlanta come from that from that Hoover tribe. So um, I'm going to stay politically correct okay. and just say shout out to them. Okay. But back to these California niggas. <laughs> 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 um, so... His thing is that, A, this this um, rap thing, okay, so this is like a pyramid has occurred. Mm -hmm. The gangs have now infiltrated all through the prison system, right? Mm -hmm. And all you got the rappers now who are all like... Claiming some kind of affiliation. Or, or, okay. or, or set, right? And of course, the young, the youth, mm -hmm. and let, let's be clear, because one thing Charleston does, he says... The babies are listening to them. Yeah. And and I like the way he says that because when you say the kids or young adults, it kind of takes the sting off it. No, the babies are listening to this. Because when you're 13 years old, you're a baby. Especially in our community where niggas ain't growing up till they 52 anyway. So at 32, you definitely a baby. <laughs> so his thing is that... Um, Y'all making these lyrics, talking about how cool it is to be gangster, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how cool it is to shoot up houses and all of this violence, and how you ain't scared to go to jail. <laughs> and then he makes mockery of it, though, though, every time. And I don't know, I'll be honest, fam, I don't know any of these kids. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting this all secondhand, so forgive me. Mm -hmm. So, like, he was clowning this boy, uh, NBA young boy. You know who this man? I got a young. We got a young intern there. <laughs> yeah. You know who this kid is? Wow. So and again, I'm not taking any sides. I'm just here, put it out there, and I'll give my opinion. Cause you know, I, I niggas mad at me cause I got away and didn't go to jail. I was like, I thought I should get a pat on the back. And so many of us get caught. Y'all niggas mad at me because I escaped the Rico. And I, I had to for me to get my street cred. You telling me I had to go get locked up? Wow. What kind of the reverse energy of the, crab, huh? the energy of the crab, like, <laughs> like how, how y'all worship the one that got caught and me who, and nigga that got away. Now nah, I'm the I'm the square because I got away. <laughs> this nigga got caught five times and he's smarter than me. Wow. It's pretzel logic, baby. It's pretzel. Logic. So okay, all right. I digress. Excuse me, family. Thank y'all for letting me vent that uh, for a moment. But so my brother, back to Charleston. Charleston say. He was clowning this, and he clowns all the rappers. Mm. But some of the ones that immediately the content, this kid, NBA young boy, who I guess is a, like a big deal, mm -hmm. right? So he had caught a case. He had to go sit down. Then he was like writing letters, like, <laughs> I, I don't want to be here. Mm. And he had his fans signed. 100,000 people wrote a letter to Joe President Biden. Mm. And Charleston like, nigga, you a gangster, right? Right. You ain't never heard about John Gotti writing no damn letter talk about <laughs> I don't want to be here with y'all with y'all gangster. But so when he said it, you know the world I come from. You know my pops and them. I was raised by the trap gods, and I was like, he made me think. I was like, yeah, the real throw niggas. They get they go to jail. They just be like, I'm going to I'm going, I'm going to, jail. to jail. I remember like, I, in fact, it it, made, it threw me back. To, I remember a little boy, Mr. Horn, at, it, when it, at this barber shop at Mr. Horn's original barber shop. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the case had been going on and on. 
And I'll never forget, and Pop just was saying, he said, you know, I'm just ready for it to be over. I got to go sit down. I got to go sit down. He's like, I'm just tired. Right. Mm -hmm. um, real gangsters really feel like that, though. They don't, they don't, they don't cry no, about. No. And he like, and worst of all, though, you spitting this shit to these kids, like about the glory of all of this gangster, rah, rah, shoot them up, bang, bang shit. Then you go to jail. And then, what's the other one? Uh, young homie gonna know this one. Little Uzi Vert. He familiar with him too. I just found him. I just found him. I just found I guess this guy is also like on fire, right? Wow. Man. Yeah. But Charleston be clowning because he like, one nigga, you ain't never shot no Uzi. Mm. Mm. So how the fuck you get a name Uzi Vert? <laughs> and then the nigga who didn't, you know, he didn't, he didn't did this. You didn't sat down before. Mm. Is there anything particularly cool about sitting down? No, no, it's not nothing cool. It's not nothing like you're going to no resort, <laughs> you know. So don't you can't be trying to put that into their mentality that yeah, it's just an okay ride, you know. Just, or don't worry, you know. Right, or it's all when just somebody, part of it. Yeah, when somebody has control of your time, that's not fun. You know, you have to ask to go to the restroom. Uh, that's not fun. So, um, you know, so because of this, you know, the rappers, of course, have, have taken his bait mm -hmm. and they be threatening him and they going to do this and that. And then he, of course, because he's, he's playing chess, though, and they're playing checkers. Mm -hmm. He'd be like, y'all niggas ain't going to do nothing to me because I will come with eight of them white boys, come with eight of them white boy sheriffs, them big tobacco <laughs> spitting white boy sheriffs. You know you niggas ain't coming nowhere near me. He said, I got law enforcement friends. He said, when I come with them big... Tobacco spitting, DeKalb <laughs> County Sheriff White Boys, you niggas ain't gonna come. And the truth, he's telling the truth, dog. Nigga, I be like, when you niggas start shooting at the police, then I'm gonna be impressed. Mm -hmm. One white police come and arrest 52 niggas with guns. One white boy pull up in one scout car with a 38. You niggas got 82 AK 57s. That white boy say, y'all out of the rest, y'all niggas will. <laughs> now, for me, they ready to shoot and kill. I say, so anyway, it's become a thing. Yeah, yeah. It's it's become a thing. This Charleston White, um, you know, it's a lot to how these gangs and and I know you can't tackle all the things. I mean, the broken. It, to me, it's a symptom, right? right. Our, our community is broken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and because our community is broken, we're producing broken people. But some of the shit he's like is saying is true. Like, if your OG been spent most of his adult life in jail, don't take no advice on him about life. Because what the fuck he know about life and he been in jail all his life? He can tell you, like, like what's going on I'm a, in there? We're all a pro He can tell you about surviving in jail. Right. Because that's what he know. Right. Yeah. Right. We all products of our environment. <laughs> Papa and him taught me how to hustle. That's what they knew. Right. right. They taught me, they taught us what they knew, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. But they didn't tell the difference in how time has changed. They was like, oh, we doing this, so hopefully you won't have to do none of this. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. That's, 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 that's the way it's supposed to be. Right? Mm -hmm. Because this shit we doing, having to deal with dope fiends and carry pistols and all that shit, that's not a preferred way of living. Right, right. Um, and so I was just showing you the other tape, I guess he's, he's all, you know, again, at least rappers take the bait. Mm -hmm. You know, he's fucking with T.I.'s son, and he's fucking with Lil Bootsy's son. And we had just did something on Yeah, we just did something on his son. You know, and I, again, I, I, yeah. I, 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 I do give the young people a little bit of a pass. Because, but see, it's easy for me as a 50-year-old some businessman mm -hmm. to look at, one of these millionaire rappers kids would be like, but you soft as snow and you, and it's nothing wrong with being soft as snow because your daddy's rich. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll be a minute I used to I used to be fascinated growing up in the suburbs <laughs> when they would drop my ass off in the projects for the weekend. Cause the shit the niggas was doing it going to me that shit was like Disney. It was so exciting because I would be like <laughs> it, I, like people don't go to work. Don't nobody go to work. I'm supposed to be hanging out all day. I'm supposed to be talking crazy. You know, I learned how to shoot dice. <laughs> I learned how to do all 
kind of shit <laughs> in the projects that you... So I get the allure. Mm -hmm. yeah. I get the allure. Mm -hmm. The thing is that nobody tell you, though, is that the kid who's square in school, the same kid... Let me tell y'all something. This is the truth. The kid y'all all picking on in high school and bullying, mm -hmm. before who study all the time and get good grades, mm -hmm. there's a thing you're going to call him one day, and it's called boss. The <laughs> motherfucker who, the cla who talking shit, don't want to study, always getting in trouble. You go see him at the gas station. Yeah. Ten years. Asking for some change. And that's the cruel part that this culture, and that's what I think Brother Charleston White is trying. We've we we've started to co-sign a lot of bullshit, dumb shit in our community. Yes. And we we not doing the next generation. As a matter of fact, let me just put it out there. We are doing them a huge disservice, especially for people like myself. Who really know better, you know? And I try to stay in my lane, um, but anyway, if you guys, I guess everybody else knew about Charleston White besides me, but now that I do know, before before the show, you put I'm gonna reach out and see if I can even get him on the show. And you know, and again, I and then he did say something that made me really favor him, because you know, I've always been one to say a, hey, you know, I don't like it when they put people who hustle in the same category with gangs. Right. Yeah. Because I never understood. I we can't get no money because you wear blue, you wear red, and I wear blue, so we can't get no money together. Right. What can where they do that at? Right. <laughs> and then they be like, oh, we can't be friends because um, he, they killed my homie. I say, nigga, white folks kill beef. We dropped bombs on Japan, killed millions of people. Don't I bet one of y'all got a Lexus Infinity? America and Japan do a lot of business together now. They killed millions of each other. Let yeah. me give you a little lesson. We firebombed the Nazis, blew up G Germany. Germany killed millions of Americans. You, some of y'all got Mercedes and BMWs. Those are the same people who made tanks for the Nazis. White folks kill billions and millions of each other. And then when the fight be over, they say, well, can we get some money together now? <laughs> yeah. that for, I'm so for, yeah. Cause we play ourselves because it shows the actual emotional and financial immaturity of the black man. When you say that ignorant shit, you killed my homie, they shot at me so we can't never, nigga get over it. That's right. You owe it to the next generation to get over that little bitch shit talking about what somebody did to you 25 years ago. Your children can't go come with that same energy. And if your children, and if you and if you give your children the same, when does it stop? Mm, that's right. I'm sorry, fam. Once again, I got a little. What is Minister Farrakhan said? A little passionate about. Um, but it is. It's cause yeah. I see it. Mm -hmm. You know, our office. Mm -hmm. We right here on West Seven Mile. Mm -hmm. We ain't off in some plushy suburbs escape. Mm -hmm. um, I walk to the stores around here. Mm -hmm. You know, I I see the plight of my community. And God's been really good to me, you know, and to all of us. Right, yeah, right. for sure. Right. And, you know, to one which much is given, much is required. And um, so shout out to Charleston White. I'm just going to say it. He yeah, tell, he's telling a lot of truth. I mean, yeah. and um, yeah, I am yeah. a businessman. I understand that rap is a, that these guys are characters. But you guys, you know, when you go into character, you got to understand. And this is going to go when we just talking about Scarface. To these kids, they don't understand, like, Scarface is a character. Mm -hmm. They think. These rappers are really living that life. Cause somebody gonna pull your card. Somebody gonna pull your card. Yeah. And they say, "We who got the well, rent?" Well, in the past, I mean, if you really stop and think about it, the two biggest deaths in hip hop was like Tupac and Biggie, obviously. But right. ever since then, it's just escalated. I mean, like right now, I, I could think of like my maybe what six, seven different rappers that died violently in one year. I mean, and that's again, that's just that's showing how sick our our culture has become, because you've got young black millionaires who, instead of being in some five star suite with a room full of pretty girls, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are riding around with guns shooting at each other, and it's like, homie, what what part don't you get? Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of distraction that's going on, so that's why they're not getting the message. Yeah. You know, we have yeah. some that, that put in the hard work to try to put the message out there. Mm -hmm. But you got a lot of distraction, which is in that social media. And last thing on this, before we get off this thing, I guess there's this thing in um, the hip-hop world called checking in. <laughs> so it's like, um, 
you you in Detroit, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm from um, Miami. Okay. Well, when I come to my when I come to Detroit, I gotta check in oh. with you, tell you I'm coming to town, and what? you're gonna tell me that it's safe to come to town. And yeah. then when you come to Miami, I gotta check in with you. And then we go out to L.A., we gotta check in with the, the niggas in the reds and the niggas in the blue and everybody uh -huh. niggas in. And so your man Charleston said, "Well, why don't the white folks gotta check in?" Right. White folks come and go. You don't tell Taylor Swift to check in. Wow. That little white girl laying in place in America, she won't. Don't one of you niggas come tell her. You better check in because the white folks will look at you like niggas. You retarded. What the fuck did you say to me? Right, right. That I need right. to call you to come to town? Right. To get this money. <laughs> to get this money. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it made me think of the double standard of how we reserve a lot of bullshit for ourselves. Yeah, see. We reserve the bullshit for ourselves because we would not dare tell um, Tom Cruise or Tom Brady <laughs> or any other white man doing anything, Justin Bieber. We ain't going to tell them nothing. We ain't going to tell Mick Jagger the Rolling Stone. Hey, nigga, before you come to L.A., you better make sure you check in with the Bloods and the Crips. Because if you don't, the Rolling Stones ain't gonna be safe. The white folks look at you like they you. Have you lost all your mind? But then, so, but, but man, Charles, they had a point. If McDagger ain't got to check in, mm -hmm. why one of the local rappers, why homie, why the other homeboys got to check in to you? Because if you gangster, mm -hmm. the real gangsters don't discriminate. Everybody on the block gonna pay extortion. Mm -hmm. No exceptions to the rule. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're white, black, Jew, or Gentile. Mm -hmm. If you're on my block, you pay for protection. Okay. Mm -hmm. They don't discriminate. Right. Seem like y'all, you know. So anyway, I love to hear what y'all family out there think about this guy, yeah. Charleston White. Um, I'm going to keep following, though. I, I keep, you know, again, uh, I understand that hurt people hurt people. I understand that people from broken situations. Um, I understand that people with... Healthy role models don't usually do a lot. Mm -hmm. And when you ain't got healthy role models, you end up doing a lot of other stuff. So, uh, But yeah, Charleston White, man. Charleston White, big Charleston, up to you. Man. Yeah, let, let me, for, for real family, chime in. Hit us, hit us up in the comments. Let us know what y'all think about this guy, what he's doing. Um, is he going too far or has he not gone far enough? Because I think he right. said something. He was like, uh, I don't think uh, they need to start giving these niggas about 15 years. He said, uh, seven, he said, giving these niggas seven ain't working out. Yeah. He said, that nigga said some crazy shit. He like, you need to start, the niggas go to jail at 20 and let them out by their 40. And then you go have you a good law by the system. I'm like, oh my God, this nigga's lost. Yeah, make them think. Yeah, he has lost his mind. But within his madness, he has given us all something to think about. He does say it awful raw, but. Something you gotta yeah, you got to cut through pitch. it. You yeah. know, I mean, sometimes you just got to cut through it if you mm -hmm. want that ticket for right. real. Yeah, and um, and he does. Like, I guess he does work with like a lot of the rappers who been killed their moms. Ooh. And then he like, you know, how, how do y'all do that? Y'all glorify all this stuff, but then your man get killed. You don't do nothing. You don't pay for the funeral. And I mean, you know, he like he went there. He was like, you know, you niggas was smoking weed at Nipsey's funeral. It's like, and then y'all don't put up no money, y'all don't buy no flowers, it's just all. So I don't know, you know. I, I love all the brothers, I want the brothers uh, wearing red to figure it out, I want the brothers wearing blue to figure it out, I want the brothers in Chicago to figure it out. But I do know this, if you know anything about what's going on on planet Earth right now, and you're a black man, your enemies and your problems ain't the ones who look like you. Oh, it's a lot of people, if you want to direct that violence and that energy towards, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it ain't the nigga who live around the block from you. Right. Mm -hmm. and that's all I'm, as far as Gump would say, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> so again, family, let us know what you think about that man, Charleston White, and, um, and what he's got going.
So I'm just going to reminisce and you fill in what's some points. So it has been, I believe, our paths crossed in, was that 20, it was 2012, 2011? 2011, yeah. 2011. Um, and we met because at that time, my family, um, we had got a contract with the Department of Corrections. Correct, correct. And we were doing uh, what was called a re-entry transitional program. Um, Mom had kind of got the contract and told me, said, well, why don't you run the point? I'm busy with the rest of our family business and you do you, you handle that portion for us. So I was like, okay. So part of the thing was, um, Adrian, is that right? Yes, it was. No, it was Ryan. Was Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, that was my last place that um, where I got released from, Ryan. Yeah. Um. So I don't know if I picked you up from Ryan. Yes. Yes. Or I picked, yeah. I yeah. Think it I was did. Ryan. Yes, yes. It was Ryan. And um, I had to wait. I had to wait a um couple of weeks um from my release date. I guess until they found you to come. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I get, I get this packet. And um, it's this guy, Dawu Shabazz, because we would get to read the packets and decide whether we wanted to take the person or not. So okay. I read your packet. And okay. I was like, all right, well, get brother, 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 we got it. We got it. We all we got. So brother ain't did nothing. Too you, bad. Too bad. <laughs> you know, you know my saying on this kind of stuff, family. I'm like, look, if you ain't did nothing to no old people or no young people, if you ain't did nothing to. Uh, if you ain't got no dead never, girl, never killed nobody. If you ain't got no yeah. dead girls or live boys or live boys in your story. <laughs> I'm probably okay with whatever. I'm probably okay with whatever else you did. Right, you can like, deal with that. It's like, well, it looked like you he was, with... looked like he was trying to get some money. Oh, well, I can understand that. He's more than welcome at my establishment. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you came in. Mm-hmm. That was a blessing. That was a blessing. Uh, we had that property over at 1198. East Grand Boulevard. Yes, at the time. yes, yes, yes. And you came um, as we got to know each other. Um, yeah, found you got your artist. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I was, I was always um, reminiscing on what I was going to do when I got out. So I was prepared that wherever place I landed, that I was going to start creating my art. But um, that's that's that was the beginning right there. Um, when I got to that place. It was a studio, and I just got to create it. Right, and I, because you actually started creating art right there the in first, that room. Yes, that yeah. you came out to join. Yeah, you started doing your art then. Right, right. Yes, I had. I even had. I had little sketches that I did within um, prison, that um, that my had an idea that what I was going to do. So then, when I got to your place, that's when I um, got fond of a certain medium that I started working on, which was the Masonite. But, and and then to keep it moving, so you're there. The state paid for like the first six months. Yeah, yeah, that was a, yeah, that was these. That man. was good, <laughs> right? I got my money on. Right? No, no, no. But let me see if you remember now. So <laughs> six months passed. We all good because the state picking up the tab. I think we got you another three month extension. Yes, they yeah. picked up the tab. State said we we ain't paying no more. Right. But I was like, whatever. He good brother. So we'll figure it out when we figure it out. That's right. Time started to pass. Time started to pass. That's right. And I approach you. I say, you know, man, tab getting a little crazy right mm-hmm. now. So. Right. But the thing was, I had just bought this building. Right, right. That's I say, right. man, I'm starting a um, project, this um, hair business. Right, right. And I'm yeah. going to need some help. Yeah. And I said, would you be willing? Maybe we can work out something. Yeah, I'll jump right on. And you jump right on. You was like, <laughs> just show me what to show up. So, it was yeah. a no-brainer. Yeah, that was But, that was but tell me, this is the thing, family. So this is, man, life, life God is good. Yes, life is, is crazy. So because of this rent situation, he comes in. He ends up taking over running the hair business for me. You did a stand-up job. I thank think you. I said thank you, but I'll thank say thank you. you again. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. You did a, he I did learned it. a lot. I learned a lot watching you as you did business, so that was that was very beneficial to me. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Again. Um, we end up transitioning the hair shop into an ice cream parlor. Which on that note, man, the kids still come by. You'd be amazed when they're here on the block. Man. Oh yeah, the kids still be asking about you. We'll be over at the brother's party stores, and they'd be like. 
hey, where your man at? Or if they've been and seen you at your name, be <laughs> yes, like, yes. you know, we yes. actually made an impact. Of course, all our kids that we used to say, they're, they're all, they're all driving. That. They're yeah. all driving. They're bigger and taller than me now. <laughs> um, and then you ran an ice cream shop for us. Yes, yes, yes. I even did a, a mural for you, too, back then on the wall. Sure did. Yeah. Sure did. I, th I think I still have that footage, if I'm not mistaken. I'll post that up, too. Yeah, I've, I've been sharing it, you know, showing the, um, the collectors of what I, what I have been doing in the past. But um, actually, one of the um, customers, it was, it was a family that came in to buy ice cream. Mm -hmm. Um the daughter of the mother is one of the um, big artists in my group. She sells art with me now. Um, because um, when we met at um, at the Coney Island where we were selling art to collectors, I recognized the mother. I said, yeah, you look familiar. Then I put it together. I said, then you should come to Motor City Ice Cream. Then she put it together. Ah. And then the <laughs> daughter, that's what she was bringing her daughter there because she was presenting her art. So yeah, that's what we, we, we bring back the connection from Motor City Ice Cream. We always oh, talk wow. about that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. but she's a big she's a big art um art seller now too with me. Yeah. Crazy small world. Yeah. And um yeah, you did a mural here for the shop. And then I commissioned you to do a piece that is uh one of my favorite pieces. You guys actually usually see it in all of our pods. It's usually right here in front of the table. Right? Yeah. Um right. Is that in frame? The I, I it's, it's the painting. I can put it in frame, but uh, yeah, it's right behind me. Hold on, I, I, I'll get up just so he can take a look at it. Yeah, because uh, that was that was very inspiring. That was very inspiring, you know, because you did see a, a, a great um, energy that you felt that um, you can work with. So you and then um, when you see me and my creativity of my art. You uh, motivated me and said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna commission you to do this piece." And you titled this fo this piece that you did for me as "Tears of Struggle." Tears of Struggle. So why don't you explain to the family yeah, what, the, what was the, your the, inspiration? The inspiration, you know, when 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 you um, when you create a a, a painting as far as uh, from a commission, you try to grab the the collector energy and what um, they're inspired with. So I know that you have a lot of love for the black family and the black community. So this piece here, it shows how, um, the, how the society always had a finger pointing at the father of the family. You know, always trying to create a way to separate the family. You know, always oppressing and then um, pointing the fears of the man in the family. So with the mentality that has been um, being so much instilled into the young ladies. Now they feel that they can just go and do the family by themselves. So, they don't. They don't need the man. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a that's a stigma that's been going on a lot. So that's why I created this painting where it shows the family, the um, the mother, the son, and the daughter still bonded together, but the breakage right there where the where the husband is still reaching, and but the chains of society is holding them back. I mean, it's so deep. I love that. Thank I love you. that. I mean, yes. what you are Thank saying, you. You, are a heavy like, piece. you are saying so much. Thank you. And then you see what the colors too, represents our colors of black, red, and the green, you know, with the red that's representing the blood. I was gonna say, the, the it, mm -hmm. you can see specks of violence within the uh, speckles of uh, red. Yes, yes. That's that representing the um, the struggle from the family yeah. that it goes to. And that's that's a, that's what it is from the tears. So much of the hurt of the tears um, in, in that time, and it can turn to to um, to to blood. Wow! Yeah. Deep wow. blood. Wow! Yeah, man. Very deep. Very great, deep. Great, great piece. This. So, um, so let's fast forward it up a little bit. You leave the ice cream shop, you tell me you got another opportunity. Me being the kind of guy I am, I said, sounds like they can pay you more than me. I think you should go there. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, we are keeping it a buck, y'all. I was like, you should go do that. <laughs> right, right. Because I'm like, I mean, you don't, you don't hold people back. Right. And you always and, had um, the energy to um, push a person forward, too. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. I always, I always admired that. I, always, I, admired, I watched you in business. And I use that in my business too, as I deal with art, you know, and I share the business, you know, not only when you are an artist, you have to, and this is your passion, you also has to be professional mm -hmm. as a business. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so. I, I remember, I remember some of the first artwork 
pieces that you used to show me, like when, when you do the heavy abstract, because that's what you presented yourself as, was an abstract artist. Right, that's right. I, I looked and I compared your artwork to uh, Jackson Pollock. I said, you are like the second coming of Jackson Pollock. Yeah. I'm like, whoa! Look at this. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm gonna share some of the, some of the uh, art because I've done some uh, shooting for you, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, and you yeah. commissioned me to do some work for you, so I can share it with the family out there. Okay. But I mean, uh, no, nah, some I mean some really heavy, you know, deep pieces like you know. Yeah, I, I've had I had a lot of collectors that um, tell me that um, it resembled Jackson Pollock. So you know, with with creating art. Um, and being an artist, you always want to try to find your your certain signature. Right. You know, you might can always have a familiar style of another artist. Right. So with 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 Jackson Pollock, he did a drip and splatter. Mm -hmm. So even with that technique of just with abstract, you it's a self um, expression mm -hmm. of your way mm -hmm. of um, throwing the, throwing the paint or medium onto your onto your canvas. But I I came up with a way to use certain tools. That will have my um, my technique of uh, paint on a canvas a little bit different from um, Jackson Pollock. And, and don't get me wrong, since that time, I've noticed that you've evolved as an artist greatly. Thank you. I thank mean, you, you know, you. I remember we we had talked. I mean, because you know, for you guys who don't know, we were working together here. All three of us. Yeah. This is like a reunion, yes. like a family yes. reunion in many ways. <laughs> I sit back and I, you know, doing graphic design. I just thought about the differences in doing graphic art and doing, you know, art art. And it's just like I said, man, it's a way to uh, fuse and combine some of these things. And I noticed you had grabbed a couple of pieces of graphic art that I, I had done for clients or yes. just certain things yes. you look at and you're like, yes. dude, I like that. Let me see that. Let yes. me work with that. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and you know, like I was thinking like in the future, because, you know, just putting it out there, it'd be kind of slick if we got some of your art on some of our merch. Yes. You know yes. what I'm saying? Will, we can work something out like later be on because we had talked about this like 10 years ago yes. about yeah. coming together and doing some some uh, some quality products with your art. Because mm -hmm. I always told you graphic art is is an applied art. It's more of a directed art. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and what you do is from within. Okay. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? I try to bring people's visions to life. You bring your visions to life. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, cause that that one piece because like I said, you do great um, photography, and there was one client that oh, you had you. did um, thank you, thank you, thank you, you had did a piece for, and um, when I see when I see certain um, objects or pictures, um, I will still get a, a spiritual connection, and then I will change it to my way to mm -hmm. try to create from right. the thing. So it was just that it was that one um, piece that you did for someone where it was a man and a woman hugging. But, yeah, that yeah, became like that one be, of your signature pieces. Yes, yes. I've yeah. sold about four four different paintings of that particular um, title, um, Intensive Embrace. Okay. Because I took it to another level as far as the man and the woman hugging, but I put it whereas one arm was of strength and one arm mm -hmm. was of caress. I changed it up, and it, like a lot of collectors love that. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. So, so let me ask you, Double. Um, I think that Jay-Z 444 album came out maybe about five six years ago mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and of course they did the big animated um, video for it and of course there's a whole line in there he spits a couple verses where he's talking about I'm trying to put y'all up on a million dollars worth of game for 9.99 mm -hmm. and he's talking about um, how I bought this art for one million a year later it was worth two millions four years later it's worth four million yes I yes. can't wait to give it to my children and it kind of I mean, a guy like Jay-Z and where he's at in our culture, such an icon, I think it brought a lot of people's attention. I mean, people who I never had heard even talk about art after that song was like, they're talking about buying art. And he, yeah. he laid it out in a way um, to make our community start to understand what other communities have understood right. for a long time, right. which is that art is a great investment. Yes, a generational wealth. Yeah. Because like, like he said in, 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 his, um, in his song, that he he won he's he's in collecting it so that he can pass it to his daughter, 
you know, because you're um, generational wealth of the art you collected so that years later is going to increase in value. And then that's the that's that um, set money just set aside for your generational wealth. You know, um, even when he started speaking about that, um, other other artists were listening. He didn't have to say it directly that it was generational wealth, but some of the other artists were listening. So um, even an example um, for one of the black um, artist Kerry James Marshall um, his art was he's a black artist um, he was selling his art for like the hundreds or at, at one time and then um, another co um, curator had noticed his work and asked for him to be in this certain auction mm -hmm. okay and within that auction um, Puffy Combs was there wow mm -hmm. yeah so Puffy Combs was there and he wanted to beat the, um, the bid so he just went to hundreds of thousands for that painting. He said, I'm, this is my painting, and he went to the hundreds of thousands. And from that moment, Kerry James Marshall is a, is a bigger, so you know his, his, so his Puff, paint. So Puff has some of this person's work, right? Yeah, Kerry James Marshall, yes. And because of that incident, because of him buying it and jumping it to that price, now his prices goes from the thousands. So that's how it is with the investment of a piece of art. You never know. Um, two days or three days later, it can shoot from 700 to 4,200. All right. Yeah. And, and so we were just yeah. off camera, and we will just, I'd never share my business with my personal business on film, but today <laughs> we're going to do this. So I paid 400 bucks for this picture, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Now that photo, now that picture's worth, what would you estimate? I'd say at least 2,000. So that's more than four times it's, it's increased right. its value more than four times so i was saying if i'd have put that four hundred dollars in chase bank or bank of america and just let it sit there mm -hmm. if i'm lucky that 400 would have turned <laughs> into 420. <laughs> yeah uh, maybe because the maybe. bank's not paying any interest right right i'm actually losing money well right? actually right. you got bank charges yeah you got the charges they, they'll it? start gobbling the uh, 400 you, up you lose <laughs> yeah yeah you lose money actually by keeping it in the bank but this, that's better than it's done. You, your, your art, like most art, it does better than um, the stock market. Mm, yes. Which is yeah. why wealthy people for a long time have put their money in art. In art, yes, yes. Because, I mean, now, now you want to go deep into it. Why do you think when, when, they, um, when they invaded our, our, um, our native places you know back in the time in in, in in years they made sure that they took the art absolutely right so it's a big thing right yes. now it's a big thing the african countries are demanding because you go to the louvre museum in paris mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you go to the crown jewels um or, or in england you go to all these fancy museums all over europe and america and the artwork from africa is there. Is there. That's right. And they're and, making money from it. And they're it. making money from it. And finally, African countries are getting themselves organized and saying, hey, you guys got to get stuff back. Right. And some of them have. Yeah. Some of them have got it, you know, yeah. because they was able to have the documents to show that this was there from their tribes. Yeah. yeah. This has yeah. been done. Like, they have so been going and it, it's, it's working. so many things with this art thing that is, I'm yeah. so happy that our community is starting to finally connect the dots. Like, from Africa to what you go to these museums, mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. the investment, mm -hmm. to the um, storing of wealth. Right, right, yeah, right. And then, and then, um, even in um, European artists, they even um, their creativity have come from the style of African artists. If you pay attention to yeah. a certain technique, you know, yeah. it's from the styles of the African. Artists. So they know how wealthy we are. Yeah, they yeah. Know, they know how wealthy you are in our art. The art is very wealthy, very and and continue to well. Do you have any uh, any any viewings or shows or galleries up uh, recently? <clears throat> well, I just recently um, had some art at the Detroit Historical Museum. Um, this bill was up there for about a month and a half. Uh, we're about to um, break that down on the thirteenth, but um, in November um, there'll be uh, another um, holiday. Um, exhibit at the Erin House Gallery. Okay. That's a black owned gallery. There's a, there's a lot of black owned galleries. Where's that too. located? That's right there on um, um, Gr West Grand Boulevard near Linwood. 
Oh, well, yes. pretty close. Yes, to where. yes. <laughs> um, you'd be surprised how many black-owned um, galleries there are here in Detroit. Yeah. If there's another one, too, Pam, um, I believe it's Pamela Williams. or Pam, She has an art gallery in, in the Fisher Building, which is well-known, too. Okay. Yeah, she just opened it up. Living Noise is pretty rich with uh, with galleries That's and true. Art, art shops. That's true, especially since... Um, you know, at that at that time when they had the big COVID and they had to shut down a yeah. lot. But then after that, they started giving out a lot of grants for um, starting the businesses and everything. And then a lot of places along um, Livernois started opening up and coming together to create a artist yeah. um, avenue. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like, yeah. Like, like you say again, art. art. Yeah. I mean, art. Art, man. It's just. It's just <laughs> Big it, time. it affects every part of life, and it always has. It always yeah. has affected oh, yeah. all parts of life. So because it's therapeutic, yeah, it's Damn. therapeutic. Yeah, it's just yeah. introspective as well. Mm-hmm. So do yeah, do you know when your next showing is going to be? Or where, where, where can I know? It, oh, we forgot one big. Your some of your stuff is it still at the historical museum? Yes, but it, um, we'll be um, um, picking it up on the thirteenth. So um, that's so the end of that. Thirteenth, they got yeah. a couple days. Yes. Okay. Wow. And you have a. Uh, but uh, oh yeah, I do. See, I keep I do keep myself busy because I have hundreds of paintings, and um, I try to keep myself busy and venue in different areas. I do have a, a wall exhibit at the All All Things Marketplace. Now that's uh, right there on Michigan Avenue near Trumbo. Okay. It's one six two zero Michigan Avenue, um, and it's ran by Jennifer. Um, Ask Jennifer. She's a black owned too. She has a shop there that has um, novelties of Detroit. You know, you can get Detroit shirts, Detroit hats, and anything in like a cups, anything for What's the, the address tour. there? What's the address 1620 um, Mac, I mean, um, Michigan Avenue, um, Suite 123. Awesome. Awesome. Mm-hmm. awesome. awesome. And, she, and then she buys, she has in, um, the, the whole space where I was speaking about if you have space to have art exhibits. Right. She has opened up the back space for art exhibits. So she not only do she have the front space okay. for the novelty show right, right. store every day that she opened, but she has the uh, the back space for an art gallery. And you know, like I say, with a it curator, like a, a business I might want to get info. Right, right. You know, because I'm a being, a cu- a being a <laughs> right, <laughs> being a curator, you automatically get twenty five to thirty percent of a sales of an artist piece of work. Mm-hmm. So we we have pieces there. Um, like now, I know I have some there, like three hundred to like um, uh, one thousand. So, okay. um, and it's about a few, few different artists. But okay, uh, we got uh, two minutes before we do the changeover. All right. So within that two minutes, again, thank you, brother Sabras. Oh, I, I think love you're gonna it. sit in for a minute. We're gonna chop up some okay. other stuff, okay. get your insights. You. But we want to give a shout out <laughs> to our sponsors. So. We are talking about, of course, a Vinyl's Apparel located at 3246 West Davidson Suite A. That is Vinyl's Apparel located at 3246 West Davidson. Just re-hit the... uh, It's uh, right next to it, of course, is the great Blazing Hookahs, which is available for rental spaces and all of your hookah desires. You guys are over there. That's on Davison between Linwood and Dexter. You cannot miss the sign. You will see it says Vinyls. You will see the window displayed with the hottest fashions for yeah. men and women. Uh, mention Big Boss Filmworks. Mention Motown Mafia. Mention Brother Shabazz. <laughs> mention Brother Lou. Mention Pops. Mention any other family. And they always take care of you, but they'll take extra care of you. So, again, that is Vinyls Apparel located at 32 32- 46 West Davidson, Suite A. Go holler at my man. Somebody was giving me an idea, too, because you know when you create an art, you always try to come up with something different. Mm-hmm. And somebody was saying, you need to create some old school um, characters that's, that nobody really... It's not, so many. So that that's like, what I'm looking at. Yeah, that would be a, a unique... Um, Portrait of, uh, of, uh, of the old gangsters, mm-hmm. you know. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that'd be hot. Yeah, because you see how some a lot of artists they all they can think about is probably um, doing what everybody already know of, you know, um, Jay Z or right. you know, what I'm everybody, saying? Like, you know, and then you know, actually in art for those paintings to really become um, more valuable, you really have to ask the artist for. Uh, 
photos of this. For permission yes, to, to, to have it as far as taking it to the next level. You can just always have a have a painting of a of a of a Jay Z or something that has been in somebody else's home. But when you want to take it to the level to try to try to get that big money for it, then you gotta get that permission from that certain artist. Yeah, 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 right of likeness. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> right of likeness. But see, then, then uh, these, the old school, this, this would be bringing back knowledge to, to, to the new generations now when you create art, because like I say, art is of history, and it's to, it's to give them knowledge of the past and to give them inspiration too. You know, you look at this and you're like, wow, this was somebody that was real back in the day. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause we got one artist too. He he did it. He did it. <clears throat> the first black man that was uh, that was arrested. I can't remember his God, name. He was only thirteen years old. Yeah, this was a, say that again. The the first black young man that was ever arrested. You know when they when they really you know was doing a experimenting you know, and they they did it to this thirteen year old. For doing something a little small, and then you know, like you know how you take the mug shots, how right. they have the, the, yeah, the yeah. criminals goes over. They got this little thirteen-year-old, but it's something that was hid from you know of, of the knowledge of a lot of us, right? You know, and so this artist that I'm with, he made a painting, okay, and it's, it's it's going big, you know. Yeah, I can't wow. remember his name, but that's what you do, you know, in art, you bring up situation, um, history, to to remind the viewers, you know. Yeah, and it, and it goes big. But that was something. I'm like, wow, Thir this little young, this little young boy, got him with the mug shot and everything. They using him as the as the guinea pig on how they about to start doing with it. You know, you got a picture of the some stills of the. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's deep. It's this a whole lot of. I ain't gonna sell it even if they all pay five thousand. So I'm a old dog. Gonna I'm gonna give it to my unborn son. Mm, okay. <laughs> you say your unborn son. Yeah, he ain't born yet. Right. <laughs> they ain't born yet. Not really. You know, they been by the time they old, they be retiring off of that picture. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. That's how it works. I wonder how how much that picture you got, the African picture. Dude, um, it's like 60, 80, it's like almost 100,000 now. So on that, um, Gordon Turner, I think was his name. The, what opinion you have? Yeah. Oh, yeah? So oh. when Pops and I hit that lake and we moved out to Southfield, it's unfortunate because Eddie had, man, Eddie probably had now, it'd probably be a half million dollars worth of art. So this, the number one black interior designer at the time was a guy named Harrison Taylor. So he would go out and find in his day the Dawu Shabasses of the day. Okay. And it was this guy, Gordon Turner, who was doing all these African paintings mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. like the one that Eddie had was like the most controversial he did this one where there was an African king and the white people were slaves and like the African soldiers were shuttling in these white slaves wow. okay. yeah um, okay. and it was the first piece of art when you walked into Eddie's mini mansion yeah first thing you saw was like this huge picture of this African king with these white slaves right wow. Well, he did uh, one of us, he did one for us. It was like two brothers meeting in the desert and then like in the background. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He did a couple pieces, so, you know, then. Okay, so that was in the 70s. They made me bought them for like a couple thousand dollars, which was $3,000 for a picture back in the 70s was a lot of money. Right, right, right. We still have that art. Those pictures now are like $100,000 each. Because of course, after he passed, yeah, yeah, and then he, he ended up, and then he, yeah. he started getting work put into like the uh, the, the Smithsonian African American. Oh, then that's really boosted uh, value and of the yeah. Big time celebrities, yeah, like the Cissy yeah. Tysons and Roberta Flags, yeah. people like that. Yeah, started buying the yeah. big artists so up today. Kept on, kept on, kept on, and people like that. Oh, yeah, um, I started recognizing his work, mm -hmm. and yeah, he became a big deal. So now I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. So you know, you know, you know the story with Bill Cosby too, right? What's that? I went as far as with the art. No. When you know when he got locked up, <clears throat> you know they cut off all his money from the you know the from the royalties yeah, and everything. Down, they took you down know what I'm saying? The Cosby Show took yeah. down Pat Albert took yeah. down all his money. Yeah. So he why? So why he was right? So why he was locked up? He had art in his storages. 
because but but he listened to Oprah the year before he had got locked up. Oprah had put a bug in his ear. You know all that stuff that you investing in buying to get into art. He just so happened to buy so many um, um, numbers of pieces of art for thousands of dollars. Right. And then at that time when he his money ran out on that, he was able to go to his storage and grab like one or two paintings and sell them for hundreds of thousands to wow. keep that money. And he still got more. He still got more, got more art. So that's the value too of how you can invest in art. Bill Cosby is an example. I'll be sharing that with people too. Right, and I'm an example. You, um, what was that war movie they did with Brad? Monuments Man. Monuments Man, which was a whole movie about in World War II. When Hitler bum rushed Europe, first things he did was bum rush the gold and the art. You know, I gotta go. Right? They appreciate so much. When the Jews were getting shuttled to the Holocaust, and after they had took their money and they had took their jewelry, a few Jews were able to barter their freedom to get out with pieces of their art. With art. So yeah, as you said, you hit it like even in the in the cone. What the first thing they did when they bum rush Africa? They went for that art. They took all the yeah, art. Man, yeah. They yeah. Sent it back to Europe. Yeah. yeah. Three hundred years later, we still begging to get the art back. Right, and then, you know that was, that probably was a, 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 a call too. Make sure you, you get. get the oh, that was. <laughs> soon as that go, soon, you land. Right? Make sure, sure you, you get, get the, the art. art. Yeah, yeah, that was all in the plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Apartment building in Highland Park. Niggas stole it, man, and like sold those pictures like for 20. They thought they were like prints. They didn't know like original. I mean, somebody, somebody. Somebody bought, hit a lick. Yeah. Somebody hit a lick. Yeah, that's still going for on like too. For like $10. Didn't you say Ooh. it was like Cartier eggs? And oh, they had uh, Fabergé oh eggs, God. Cartier yeah. China, Tiffany Crystal. Ooh. I was a little kid, man. I was running through the house and I knocked over a Louis XIV back rock crystal. And I was a little boy, I was like, why is mommy tripping? I didn't know the, the bottle, it was like a $5,000 bottle of booze. Okay. The crystal. $50,000 now, dude. Yeah, the crystal wow. was worth more than the actual booze. Wow. It, was, it had been cantered for the French royalty. I'm running through the house. Yeah. Let me tell you about, again, art. <laughs> yeah. So the the container that it came into has a hand painted um, crest on it. Ooh. Not the crystal, not the cognac. The, can, the box that it comes in is worth like $8,000 now. Because you said it was hand painted. Hand painted. Yeah, yeah. That's original art. Uh, original? Yeah. Stuff that we just didn't, we don't be well, knowing, man. Yeah, yeah. We don't be knowing. And again, to Eddie's credit, man, to the fat man credit, even though man with only a third grade education, but a genius in his ways, he understood you buy the best, man. If you got money, you buy the best. And if you don't know, go find you some art people, some brothers and sisters who know art, and say, look, I'm, I'm sitting on all this money. What should I, and he did that, you know? He went to the brothers and sisters who were insightful into the art world mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and said, y'all pick it out. Mm -hmm. Do yeah, not go to Macy's and buy your artwork. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Don't do that. Do not go to That's Macy's and buy your artwork. Go. It's not going to work. Reproduction. Yeah, it's and, not going to work out. Right. It ain't going to work yeah. out. Right. <laughs> it's not an investment. It's not an investment. <laughs> <laughs> Macy's does not sell investments. You got to get with brothers like Shabazz <laughs> to help you out on that. That's yeah. right. That's right.